is Peter the rock or Satan? Let's look here in Matthew chapter 16. So we can see what I'm talking about. Here we have the book of Matthew chapter 16. Chapter 16 and verse 18. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now the typical Catholic interpretation is that Peter is the rock upon which the church is built. I've already disproved that in my study on Peter being the world's or history's worst pope. Peter was not the rock. Jesus Christ was the rock. But let's think about this for a minute. Let's go with the Catholic interpretation just for a minute here. Peter is the rock of the church. Okay? Jesus just gave a special authority to Peter that he would become the first pope. He is the foundation, the first in the succession of a long line of popes that go on out into the future. And he's the first pope. Okay, let's just go with that Catholic interpretation. Go down to verse 23 of the same chapter. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So, if Peter, if Jesus said to Peter in verse 18 that you are the first pope, I'm going to build, you're the rock I'm going to build the church on, why is it that just... Uh, couple verses later he's calling him Satan well certainly the uh, Catholic Church would say something about that wouldn't they we're gonna look about that here we have page 156 of the Catechism speaking about this situation up in here you can pause it and read it Right there, Peter, Peter will remain the unshakable rock of the church. Again, I covered this in the other study. But look down here. Uh, from, the day that, uh, from the day Peter confessed that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Master began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things and be killed and on the third day be raised. Peter scorns this prediction, nor do the others understand it any better than he. In this context, the mysterious episode of Jesus' transfiguration takes place on a high mountain. Wait a second. He scorns the prediction, but they don't talk about what's going on there. All right? Very interesting. And there, you know, they, they refer to it, Matthew 16, verses 22 to 23. But why is there no discussion of why Jesus called Peter Satan? Kind of a weird thing, isn't it? I mean... Shouldn't there be something in the Catechism about that? But let's go to the oldest of the Roman Catholic Bible translations. Many pre-Vatican II Catholics would consider this actually to be the best of the, uh, you know, the best of the best uh, English translation ever made, and that is the the original and true Reims New Testament of Anno Domini 1582. Okay. Let's go to Matthew 16. They have all these good footnotes in here. Matthew 16. Here we have the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 16. I say, and I say unto thee, Thou art, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. All right. Verse 23, who turning, turning said to Peter, Get, Go after me, Satan, thou art a scandal unto me, because thou favorest not the things that are of God, but the things that are of men. Now you go down in here to the annotations, in chapter 16. There they talk about verse 13. Verse 14, verse 17. Here you're beginning into the thing of verse 18. And it goes down through verse 18. All this information about Peter being the first pope. 18, verse 18, verse 18, verse 19. Verse 19, down through. Verse 
and then they jump from discussion of verse 19 to verse 27. And then they go to the next chapter. Again, they're not discussing verse 23. I wonder why. Why is it that the Catholic Church will base the very foundation of their whole system upon verse 18, but they won't discuss verse 23? What about a more modern Catholic Bible? Here we have the New American Bible, St. Joseph edition. Let's go to Matthew 18. Excuse me, verse, I'm thinking verse 18. Matthew chapter 16, verse, where do we have here? 18. I, I for my part declare to you, you are rock, and on this rock I will build my church, and the jaws of death shall not prevail against it. You know, jaws of death. Okay, that's kind of interesting. You know, the gates of hell versus the jaws of death. But then you get down here to verse 23. Again, Jesus turned on Peter and said, Get out of my sight, you Satan. Doesn't call him Satan, just you Satan. You are trying to make me trip and fall. You are not judging by God's standards, but by man's. Okay? Now, they're certainly going to discuss, uh, you know, this thing of verse 23 in the footnotes, correct? Um, no. It's not there. Zoom in here a little bit more so you can see it. No discussion. Hmm. I mean, isn't that kind of weird? You know, I mean, you'd think that this would be a fairly major thing. Uh, that one minute Jesus is calling him the rock that the church is going to be built upon, and the next he's calling him Satan. It's kind of weird. But let me just show you how some of these new versions actually help out their master, the Vatican. I think it's kind of an interesting little thing here. Uh, let's see, I'll do this one first. This one here, the uh, Common English Bible. There were Roman Catholics and Jesuits actually sitting on the translation team of this thing. Common English Bible, New Testament. Let's go to Matthew 16. But he turned to Peter and said, "Get well, first of all, go up to verse 18. Where are we at here? Um, I tell you that you are Peter and I'll build my church on this rock. They changed the wording there to make it sound more appropriate to the, you know, the gates of the underworld won't be able to stand against it. Mm -hmm, sure. But look at verse 23. I thought this was interesting. But he turned to Peter and said, get, the, or get behind me, Satan. You are a stone that could make me stumble. Huh? Not thou art an offense unto me. You could make me stumble. Interesting. So Jesus is actually admitting to having some frailty there, and you, you could make me stumble here. Like he's going to fall into sin, according to this wicked nonsense here. It's ridiculous. How about the... Uh, Catholic Youth Bible, New Revised Standard Version. Another interesting thing here. Book of Matthew. We're in chapter 16 there. It's chapter 17, verse 7 is where it is on that page. But introducing Peter the Rock. What images does the name St. Peter bring to your mind? The simple fisherman named Simon, who was among the first disciples called by Jesus, the hopeful believer who first recognized Jesus as the Messiah, the fearful friend who denied Jesus three times, the leader of the early church, whom we recognize as the first pope. This is a Protestant, quote-unquote, Protestant Bible. Peter is all these things and more. The Bible paints a picture of a very human leader with sins and weaknesses, along with many gifts and great faith. You know, the author of Matthew uses a play on words to make a statement about Peter as the foundation of the church. The new name that Jesus gave him, Peter, means rock. So Jesus is saying, you are a rock, and on this rock I will build my church. The Catholic Church uses the scripture passage as support for its teaching on the Pope's position as the spiritual leader and highest authority of the church. Peter's primacy as the first of Jesus' apostles is understood to be passed on to the current Pope through the succession of popes 
to go back to the beginnings of the church at Rome. Okay, uh, interesting because Peter was never in Rome, according to Scripture. You had to go with Catholic traditions to, to try to say that he was in there or something. But uh, again, we're not seeing any discussion of verse 23. Why is it that the Catholics are so intent on covering up for the fact that Jesus names Peter Pope and then within a few minutes names him Satan? Why is there a desire to cover that up? I mean, um, let me ask you a real difficult question there, Catholics. Did Jesus Christ ever call anybody else Satan? You say, well, well, he said Satan hath desire to have thee and thee may sift thee as wheat. But he called him Satan. He called Peter Satan. I mean, Satan has desired any Christian out there. Any Christian is, is the devil's enemy. And the devil will go after any Christian. That's just a common thing of being saved. But show me another Christian in the Bible that was called Satan. Let's discuss it. You know? <laughs> Don't want to. <laughs> Here we have the Amplified Bible. This thing is always good for a laugh. That's about it. I mean, the most ridiculous thing. It's just funny almost. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. And I tell you, you are Peter, Petros, masculine, a large piece of rock, and on this rock, Petra, feminine, a huge rock like Gibraltar, <laughs> I will build my church. And the gates of Heldes, the powers of the infernal region, shall not overpower it or be strong to its detriment or hold out against it. Okay. Uh, boy, you can memorize this one. I mean, sure. Verse 23, But Jesus turned away from Peter and said to him, Get behind me, Satan. You are in my way, an offense and a hindrance and a snare to me, for you are minding what partakes not of the nature and quality of God, but of men. Crystal clear. <laughs> Yeah. But here's another good one. How about the message? The, uh, the message that was basically going bankrupt. They were just about out of print. And then uh, Billy Graham came along and uh, helped them to get back on their feet. Helped uh, Eugene Peterson to get back on his feet again. They were handing them out at the uh, Billy Graham Crusades. Billy Graham, who was a friend of the Pope. And would point Catholics back to Catholic churches. A little pawn for the Vatican. I saw Franklin Graham came out recently and was saying that uh, he prays that the Catholic Church remains faithful to the cause of Christ. You know, <laughs> stinking sellout. But uh, let's look at this. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. It's so hard because they just put the numbers over here, but they don't actually show you where it starts. It says here, And now I'm going to tell you who you are, really are. You are Peter, a rock. This is the rock on which I will put together my church, a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. Um, you know, that's kind of an interesting way to put it. You know, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it is what the King James Bible says. This thing says here, where is that? Uh, the gates of hell will, will be able to uh, keep it out. Not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. So then where are they trying to go? Into hell? You know, well, that's, that's a smart thing to put in there. But interesting that the old uh, Eugene Peterson here seems to be trying to help out the Catholic Church, his bosses. Check out verse 23. But Jesus didn't swerve. Peter, get out of my way. Satan, get lost. Okay? You have no idea how God works. So, Peter, get out of my way. Satan, get lost. He didn't call Peter Satan in the message. Nice little work there for the uh, his masters at the Vatican. This Satanist here, Eugene Peterson. No, the fact of the matter is that uh, if you want to understand about Catholicism, I recommend this book right here, Babylon Religion, How a Babylonian Goddess Became the Virgin Mary by David Daniels with uh, illustrations by Jack Chick. And there's a whole lot of other good uh, books and things and videos too at Chick Publications. I'm not paid by Chick. I don't work for Chick.com. 
but uh, they will tell you the truth about what Roman Catholicism is. It is ancient Babylonian witchcraft is all that the thing is. And uh, I just find it funny, the hypocrisy of the whole system, where Jesus one minute is calling Peter, he's naming him the first pope, and then he calls him Satan five verses later, and it's like, well, we'll talk about, we'll t spend all of our time talking about Peter and the rock, and it's the rock and everything, but we'll just kind of conveniently leave out the thing of where he gets called Satan. Um, it's a problem. Okay, uh, Peter is not the foundation of the church. Jesus Christ is. Again, watch the other study on Peter being the world's, or history's worst pope. Uh, it's absurd. The Roman Catholic system is, is man's traditions. It's based on just, well, based on ancient Babylonian witchcraft is what it is. That's why they have a mother church, their goddess that they worship. So um, I'm probably going to be doing a study at some point in time in the future on this one right here. Uh, to show you here the new St. Joseph Baltimore Catechism. I've been wanting to do this for a while. I have a couple different uh, <clears throat> editions of this thing. And just to show Christians what Catholicism is really all about. You see, Roman Catholicism, uh, there's another book by uh, Jack Chick called Smoke Screens. And uh, I'd recommend that one. It's just a little thin book. And basically what Roman Catholicism is, it is a system they control the different countries out there. They are the most powerful of all institutions on earth. And um, through many different little subcategories and things. Um, but they control the governments. And when they can get open control of a government, they will forcibly convert people. You can see that throughout history. Uh, that's what the Crusades were about. Uh, interesting, because Billy Graham goes out on Crusades. Um, a lot of the agents of Rome, you know, that poses Baptists or Bible believers, they'll talk about going on soul winning Crusades or things like that. Um, dangerous. But Roman Catholicism will sit back and they will play the ecumenical card. They will say, um, we're for other people. We respect other people's faith traditions and things. They'll play the game. And uh, right now the current Pope is doing this whole ecumenical thing. Well, we're all paths to God. It's all about love, love, unity, and everything else. That's because they don't have total control yet. All right? But when they get total open control, um, I mean, you know, I realize I just said that they control things. But what I'm saying is it's, it's still, they have to win the people over to their side is what I should say. I mean, let me clarify that because, you know, Catholics will look up. Look for any little thing that I say that they can get in there and say, oh, you're, you know, you just contradicted yourself. What I meant to say is, yes, they are controlling the governments, but they don't have control of the people's minds yet. But what will happen is when they get that, when they can turn people and say, these heretics out there need to be eliminated, then anybody who's not a Catholic is going to be eliminated. All right? And right now there's a whole lot of scheming going on with Catholicism and, and things out there and... Uh, I just kind of find it ironic because when you look at what's going on in Matthew chapter 16, um, they'll try to claim that Peter is the head of their church and then Jesus calls him Satan. And it's like there's kind of an interesting little bit of truth there because you see Satan is the head of Roman Catholicism. Very interesting. Peter's not the head of Roman Catholicism, but Satan is. So in a way, they kind of have it right. Just thought that was kind of interesting, but uh, I just uh, I have a burden to get out as much truth as we can on the Roman Catholic system, um, because when they do take over, uh, it's prophesied that it's going to happen, and I don't know how much that's going to happen before the the rapture, before the body of Christ leaves. Um, I don't know how much control the Vatican is going to get openly. You know, I mean, every single candidate here in America for president is connected in some way to the Jesuit order. Uh, Trump, Jesuit trained at Fordham University, his uh, vice presidential candidate is, you know, has some, I think they called him an evangelical Catholic or something like this. Uh, Hillary, her husband, you know, Bill, was trained at Georgetown University, Jesuit, biggest Jesuit school in America, and her running mate is a Jesuit. So, 
it's like they're openly saying, we're going to be taken over soon here. And when that happens and they start to forcibly convert people or whatever else they're going to do, you know, it's going to be a bad system. So that's why I continue to do these videos exposing Roman Catholicism. And of course, for the Roman Catholic people, I do actually care about you enough to tell you the truth that your system is not the biblical system. Uh, it's very clear that there's a cover-up. Uh, and you might have your explanations and whatever else about why Jesus called Peter Satan and things, but you can't deny the fact that there is definitely within Catholic sources, they're covering up for the verse 23. They cover that thing up. Why did Jesus call Peter Satan after naming him as the first pope? So, uh, and, and again, you know, like I've said to, to different Catholics in the comments and things, and I've talked about this with Catholics in person too, and that is, why is it that the Pope, current Pope and the current system of the Vatican contradicts what the supposed first Pope, Peter, what he preached? I mean, read First Peter and Second Peter. Even in your Catholic Bible, read it. Is that what Catholicism is? No, it's not. It's not. I mean, you know, Peter taught the you know, priesthood of the believer, not a special ordained priesthood to rule over people. I mean, you would think that the closest and most powerful of the popes going with Catholic teaching would be Peter. Because he goes back, he was the one that knew Jesus. So you would think, in other words, that people, the popes from then on, would all tie back to Peter as, you know, the, the ultimate authority. You would think that. But yet, the farther away these popes go from Peter the more departed from his teachings they, they go. <laughs> the whole system's false. That's what I'm trying to say. You need to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So, But I've talked about a lot of this other stuff in my other studies, so I'm not going to go into it. But uh, uh, please watch the other studies if you're a Roman Catholic. Please get a King James Bible. That's the real one, not these other ones over here. They're junk. So that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.